about the Kelly Writers House is Mike McGee. What's the amazing thing about the Kelly Writers House? Poetry. Poetry yes. Uh, Look at the clock. It's right behind you. What does it say? And when does the program start? So the amazing thing about the Writers House among literary venues. We start on time, and, and while there'll be some other people coming, we got the word out that we start on time, so people come and we start on time. It's amazing. So my name is Al Filreis, and I am about as happy as you could be, uh, given how, how crazy tired I am. I am about as happy as you could be, because Tracy Morris is in the house. She's in the house. Tracy Morris is in the house. And... This is very important. It's an important thing for us because we, as I'll say a little more officially in a minute, we've known Tracy a long time. She's connected to us. Um, so I'm really pleased that we've done this. This is great. And uh, we're recording it. And that means that in a day or two, it'll be available as an audio file. We'll be adding a segmented, segmented recordings to Tracy's Pen Sound page. And since she is a musical poet and a sound poet and a poet who cares about sound, She's a soundy person. Um, it's important to us that people who can't get to see Tracy, let's say they're from far away, they're from another country, or they're from Arkansas, and they, it's, they can listen. So this um, event is an annual event. This is our, is it our third or our second? I think it's our second. Gosh, things have you know, it's amazing. It seems like we've been doing this for a long time. It's great. It's such an established thing at the Writer's House. Um, this program is named for, in honor of, in memory of Eva and Leo Sussman. And there are many ways in which we can describe Eva and Leo. One is that they are Naomi's parents. They were Naomi's parents. And Dan Morse's grandparents. Um, and uh, Leo was a poet. And Eva and Leo valued the arts and Dan and the family have, come on in, really, we're so informal. You can't sit back there, come on. No, 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 no. Take those chairs away in the back, come on in. This is fun, you're not gonna wanna move. There's really chairs here. Come on, it's fine. There's two up there, they got it, they go, look at this. Um, thank you, this is good. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> so, um, Yes, yeah, so the, the Morse family and the Sussman family, they felt this was a great way to honor their connection to the university, which is a very strong one. Um, so uh, three kids, Hannah and Jake, are here. Hannah is a sophomore now, freshman, sophomore, <laughs> sophomore now. And, um, and Michael graduated last year, and he's doing his thing. Uh, and Dan's brother Joel is here. Um, and so Miriam and Dan, thank you for this, this is great. Um, we also have in the house some special people just want to shout out to very quickly. Um, Bill Spear came from Arkansas just for today. Um, he was here yesterday, but he's part of the ModPo um, Massive Open Online course, and he is just already a great friend of the Writer's House. And Fayetteville is a ha poetically happening place, but Philadelphia might be slightly more of a happening place, at least tonight. So we're so glad you're here. Um, Suman, is it, do I pronounce it Sumun? Sumun? Oh, Suman. Suman Ier is here, and she's also a Modpo person. But, you know, Bill's, after a couple of careers, getting to poetry again, and Suman is just figuring it out now. So we're glad. We've got two sides of the spectrum here. And Kristen Gallagher is here, who is a founder, one of the founders of the Kelly Writers House in 1995-96. It flowed out of my poetry class and into this space, which was a mess at the time. And Mike McGee is here, who is uh, someone we featured today. Um, and they're, they're, it's great that they're here. Thank you. It's fantastic. Um, Tracy Morris uh, emerged as a performer, writer, uh, from the Lower East Side poetry scene in the early 1990s. And um, she was very involved in the slam scene in those days. She toured nationally and internationally. Um, she performed her work famously on MTV's spoken word Unplugged show, which I saw, so I guess I saw you. Um, but we didn't know each other then. They clipped you out? I think they clipped me out. I was terrible. Yeah, you were not terrible. <laughs> you were a whole lot... Thad, there's seating in here. Thad, there's a seat in here. You're good. 
Okay. Um, but so she, that was the scene then. How many of you were roughly, are roughly familiar with the slam scene of that period? Okay, so Tracy, yeah, she's interested in that. She, she emerged from that, but then she began to do all kinds of other things. And she began to collaborate on performances with musicians. How many bands have you had? five bands. Now it's not that she runs through these bands and fires them all, but that <laughs> but rather that she experiments with musical and poetic modes. Um, she's now known as a sound artist, uh, a specialist in sound poetry, a theatrical performer, a musical poet, a conceptualist, uh, and, and for her mastery of various acting techniques, a scholar of performance studies, and she is a professor at Pratt Institute, where she is a tenured professor, which is so important for fans of Tracy Morris that she decided, she decided to do academia and get the PhD. And there is an academia that wants, that rewards, that feels that Tracy Morris needs to be among the leaders. And so she may have occasion to tell you about a program that she's forming in performance studies at Pratt, and we're very excited about it. Um, a few years ago here at the, at the University of Pennsylvania, she was the CPCW Fellow in Poetics and Poetic Practice. She taught an English class, which, and she's still in touch with several of the students from that class, and it still has, Tracy, effects on what we do here, and you know that. Uh, you've been to, back to the Writer's House a number of times, um, and today was a quadruple header. We started with a Mod Po, uh, uh, the open online course with 36,000 students and we had a live webcast which featured Tracy and, and several other poets. Um, and then we, she sat in on my course on genocide and wound up teaching, uh, which was great, really amazing. And, uh, and then we did a poem talk on a poem by Will Alexander. And I, this is great, uh, a poem called Compound Hibernation. So that was great. And this is the fourth event, but the most important of them. And I wanted to end this introduction and give the mic to Tracy uh, with a little, little thinking about what happens when Tracy Morris's performance piece, Africa, sometimes known as African, uh, is the final piece in the online course that I'm teaching to non-matriculating, free, not credit students around the world, 179 countries. Um, this is the final, final poem. And the students, far flung, Bill Spear and Suman, are, you're, you're two of the 37,000. Um, they, Tracy, have completely fallen for this. They love what you're doing and they love the way that we are ending the course by having your piece tie everything together in modern and contemporary poetry from Emily Dickinson and Walt Whitman to Tracy Morris. So let me just finish by quoting three of these students. Um, Sladjana Bursic, who is from Croatia, writes, this really is the best poem. <laughs> it is so powerful that it is still lingering in my mind, such an outburst of emotion, inner upheaval that leads us back to origins while insisting on our equality. It's a really a good gloss on that poem, isn't it? And all that with such a small number of words, effectiveness at its best. And Olga Avloniti, who is Italian by way of Russia, there are so many associations we can do from a single poem that is based on one line and much inspiration. I'm glad to have finally understood that poetry is not so much about the what, but mainly about the how something is said. And finally, Young Hao Tan, who's Korean, my head was ricocheting with associations of performance art, vinyl records being scratched. I didn't hear that actually in that poem, but whatever. Forced migrations, adaptations, sampling and appropriations, and the finally, finally, the fragmenting and breaking down of the line to utterances of syllables to when humans began to develop language itself and the common humanity that we share, but too often deny. That's high praise from around the world for Tracy Morris, musical poet, performance poet, theatrical poet, sound poet, author of, among other things, Rhyme Scheme, which we're selling copies of. This is a really great book. 
that you can get. After Tracy performs, we're going to look, we're going to make a little eye contact friend to friend, and she's going to sort of tell me whether we should do a Q&A, which we hope we'll do, but we'll look at the clock. And then after a little while, either right after the performance or after the Q&A, we'll go into the other room, we'll have a fabulous reception where there's wine and other stuff, and we'll get a chance to thank the Morrises and Sussmans and also to thank and praise Tracy Morris. But now you have to help me thank and praise, praise, praise this extraordinary person of tremendous fabulousness, Tracy Morris. Cannot live up to that generous intro. Cannot, possibly, so. Set your sights lower. <laughs> lovely pen people. So the highest praise I guess I can give to this lovely institution that is that it's my home away from my home, my poetic home away from home. I come here and I sit and I don't leave. I just get comfortable. And when I was a fellow here, I came early and I sat and I didn't leave. I got <laughs> I'd get here. I think my class was like at two and I'd get here at like ten and I'd just hang out. I know it's like loitering poet. Um, it's a beautiful space and um, Philly feels very, Philly and Brooklyn, we have this, you know, we have this, we, neither of us are like Manhattan. We're like, <laughs> nah. So um, I feel, <laughs> and don't want to be, by the way, um, you know. Uh, so I, I feel welcome here. I see Rachel is here from Temple. Um, and uh, I'm, I love having a Philly affiliation. Um, anyway, I, I could gush on and on, but I, I do want to thank Al for letting me ruin his class, uh, which is very, very, in, um, it was an intense and excellent class despite my meddling presence. And um, very, it gave me a, a lot of great information. Al is such an extraordinary teacher. He's like, you want to come to my Holocaust class? I was like, hmm, let's see. I could sit around outside on the couch or I could take notes on how to teach really well. Yeah, Al, I think I'm going to sit in. Um, it was an extraordinary class. No, I'm not. Um, just honest. <laughs> there are people who would disagree. And um, <laughs> thank you. And uh, the the wonderful conversation with uh, with Mike and Kenny is always fabulous. And uh, I have to give a shout out to my very good friend Charles Bernstein, who is not here. But all right, let's let's give him some snaps. <laughs> Bernstein's going on. And uh, yeah, I, like I said, home away from home. Um, what else? Let's see, what else did we do? Oh, we did the poem talk. Will Alexander, mind blown. Still trying to work my way through that. Uh, and of course, I want to thank the, the, ca the, the cast. High praise for an actor. Um, the, 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 the crew of uh, Kelly Writer's House, Al et al. Shout out to them and all their permutations. I want to get this out of the way because I will really get mad when I forget because I go somewhere into outer space um, when I start reading. So the first thing I want to say is that I'm a page poet first. Even though I'm mostly known for the noises I make, I consider myself a page poet. And I had to figure this out because, you know, when I first started doing sound poems, people would say, you know, I'd, I'd read for like 50 minutes or an hour and a half and somebody would say, I really liked your poem. And I'd go, well, I read like 15. He said, oh, no, you know what I mean, the last one. And I was just like, eh. So I actually did a weird meditation. I was just like, okay, where am I in this spectrum? And I, this is because I'm an extremist. I'm strange. So I said, hmm, if I had to choose a thing and it was never to speak again or never to write, and I was like, oh, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> I would always write. <laughs> before I, If I never made another sound, I'd be okay if I could write. Oh, trees. Um, I don't plan to have to make that choice ever. And of course, they're all iterations of writing. But um, I feel like I need to uh, always say that the page led me to these other things. Um, and, and that the, it's a fluid relationship, but it always started with the page for me. So I'm going to start with some of this. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about this book. It's um, kind of conventional. I wrote a, uh, quite a few of these poems while I was in grad school for my MFA and PhD, and I think I had to work through the process of, of um, structure and um, not to be anti-structuralist just because that's the cool thing to do. 
Um, the theorist that I studied at NYU was a structuralist, um, John Langshaw Austin, J.L. Austin, the, the philosopher. And so I think I was re- dealing with the concept of structure and the fact that I was in an MFA program that was fairly conventional. It was not Buffalo. It was much more of a conventional program. And I learned a lot of stuff, including deep resentment on structure, but, but also the love of structure. So I'm going to read some poems and then not read some poems and do some poems. Um, okay, so the first section is called uh, Kid Stuff. And I grew up in a tough neighborhood in Brooklyn, um, East New York, in a lot of housing projects. And uh, from this first poem, you'll know that I am no spring chicken. It's called a Blackout 1977. None of you guys know the black okay one two everybody else was like I was okay don't patronize me Mike McGee you're like 17 uh this is like that 25 years before I was born (laughs) hey Al yeah 1977 was (laughs) all right blackout 1977 Red-hued brick and siding holding porous heat, stars blazed out adjacent to the round-top cement building, a former synagogue. We sat around eating fried food in our natural habitat, partitioned Brooklyn between Berriman and Hegeman streets. White noise of the freezer, then a rumble reached its ta-da, went down to a kitty sound, sleepy, then silent. A sound... Applause? Nope, the cast iron stove's collected works, July's oven roasting. We consume the meat's enzymes in order to save them. Everything sienna off quiet brown appliances of my recall. Cabinets sunny disinfected yellow. Afternoon sun crisp Bronzeville outdoors. People dig out sliver ever ready batteries from cushioned car seat couched commandeered from kids Popeye Farrah Fawcett transistors set to James Brown. Hot pants. What news, man? Who needs the same old same? Con Ed made us all a forced vacation. Welcome to the club. Crack your mother's back with them high bills. Twisted silent GE toasters, Moran stereos, Philips TV parade down the street. Looney Tunes a year late, the spirit of America. We watched from the block cutting up, see low, hopscotch till the sun set and we couldn't see, throw. Flower-dusted chicken legs make gas pop blue flame red. A little girl carries chinette plates to plastic white plus blue weave lawn chairs. Lawnless, though, play suburban. Johnny Pump sprinkling all out. Grandma going from red bone to teak frying all day. Now my home's seasoned cast iron skillets refract echoes. Car horn? The ram gave himself for New Year's. Mortar crackles in the wall. Heroin on the railroad side under the overpass besides the L-I-R-R on the corner around the park sitting below the stair rails. Fly at the bottom bells, gabardine with an insert that made it two-tone with matching stitches. A contrast of shiny pants, a ridged button on the side to pull it closed, tight elastic gatherings, spine. And open shirts, expansive lapels look ready to depart with the keen wind. Its right shirt sleeve easeful folded above the nape of arm. There's a fresh scent there, the spot. A ballooning before welling is too much. A small streak, stream leak to the table's edge. A jar top street. Uh... Crazy Talk. This is the section called Crazy Talk. Postcard of Parma Giannino's self-portrait in a convex mirror. The postcard is about the curve, the hand malleability, the hands a mirror to face, the face a glass reflection, the glass is an eye, a fishbowl, a fishbowl strangulation. I mean, how far can you move your neck? The classic convex a collar, the noose of goodness, news of youth. This postcard is like lynching ones. Postcard frames a southern bell. The southern bell is hot aristocracy, medieval clothes and swelter heat. 
The band of sweat hidden by the hand, the arm, the crook of the arm is penned. The hold, the blot, the hold, the blot, the blot on the back is a Rorschach's test. What do you see in this glass? Look round. Somniac. Unnatural afterglow, what I saw, nothing on. After local news repetition, scalpels on house reflect oil from microwaved tater tots, the wine green plastic bowl. Ketchup equals, huh? Liquid evening, my eyes swim over thin blanks, banks of clouds, blank clouds, pricks start out, pinning me down, turn my face to side to see. Deep evening blue spread carpet, everything on earth. The grass isn't lush, weeds, flower, indigo, cars, homes, misshapen clay. I fall out of bunk to specific cells, nerves, signals, time slow, pouring. Apology to Pangea. I seen you. Blue, silk on a peacock, I seen you blue. I seen you, blue silk on a peacock, I seen you blue. I seen you, blue silk on a peacock, I seen you blue. I seen you blue, I seen you blue silk on a peacock, I seen you blue on a pea silk on a peacock. Feathered eyelet, I seen you blue. I seen you blue, feathered eyelet, corona around pupil of the old, I seen you blue. Dye with expensive taste, red, corpuscles of the dyers, I seen blue. I seen blue in the underbelly belly of current, coffin canoes heavily down, I seen blue. And here we be with capes, spandex, and big hair, hieroglyphs spelling super duper blue, people who made atoms, his mama molecules before morning blue. I seen you blue, that was me, with the buck dance, that was me blue. That was me with the buck dance and chicken head, I seen you. I seen you blue, that was me with the buck dance and chicken head, me making grits gree gree with blue. Can I say sorry for them sweep your feet, ma'am? Do I throw coarse salt over my blue, blue? My shoulder, do I throw coarse over my blue? That's the first time I've improvised on that poem, so I'm feeling it's like really short in the book. But this is why I don't try to set, do my set before I know, because I, feel, I feel things from you. Excerpted by Walt D. Knock, knock. Who there? A safe cracker. Slam, ain't no such thing. Hyuk, hyuk, hyuk. Untitled. What's the sister, brother, mother making in the oven? Some subtle shoulder bounce come up and break dance from Angolans going us up under ships rowing, flowing over undertow Sammy's taps. Hand jives happenstance to techno trance folks covered in colored. Folks covered in colored. True black being an encompassing hue placenta siphon off magenta violence indigo blues with cane cotton tobacco rose to hoe. So what you saying? So says John Henry against the dopest steam engine. Recidivism's net, net effect is akin to Amadou Louima's ass kicking. Hit it, reconnoit Negroes AWOL versus dominating Nazi Aryans. Reconnoit Negroes AWOL versus dominating Nazi Aryan, 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 and Aryan, and Aryan, and Aryan, Aryan versus DNA in the body politic. Differences being the leftover sugar. What flies is attracted to besides it is bullshit. We get some circular locutious infidels affirming the feral biologic important it. Each territory a precious peace, kill them with kindness. Sweet like a Lauryn Hill declaration of love over looping, overlapping the blooped bata backbeat. Like a 12-year-old's pressed curls grease with Dax. Like somebody 57 polishing a T-bird with turtle wax. It's old romance. Akira to chitlin to chicken wings. Shekere to hand bone to two techniques. Field holler doo make microphone fiends. So this is a series of New York-based poems. Sean Bell. Sean Bell was somebody who was killed by the police after leaving his own bachelor party. Sean Bell. The magenta coops lamb 
leather bucket seat skin's color. Wide black strap with the buckle, a mirror, mercury dashboard, the shade of dried hung roses. Picked by a leafless tree, plastic plants plankton on the body. At the elbow of a zigzag brick stripe highway, he gets in, rides to the horizon. Our heaven, the firmament, tuxedo father and crepe de chine mother brimming. A last hooray with a solid, silent ally, inverted curve heavy, brilliant like the driving machine, hearts in eyes and sky. Uh, uh, myomectomy cycle, taken a bow. You know what myomectomy is? Nobody? Wow, this is the first time I've been to a place with somebody. So a myomectomy is uh, an operation, as the ectomy implies, and it's um, for when you have benign tumors in your uterus, right? Um, so used to be if you had benign tumors in your uterus, you would just get your uterus m removed. But people would say, well, maybe we shouldn't just take out the f whole entire female apparatus and maybe work on that a little bit. Um, and it disproportionately affects women of color, um, the, this, these benign tumors. And I don't do the confessional poetry thing, really. I don't think I did anything wrong, really. Um, but because it's... <laughs> Female specific, there's a lot of shame connected to myomectories and benign tumors, especially because some of the, the symptoms of it are like heavy periods and all of this stuff. So women have been socialized to feel a lot of shame. So I got a myomectomy years and years ago. I was in the middle of doing a play. And I said, well, if I'm going to make an exception to the confessional school, it's because I know I didn't do anything wrong. Um, so this is for the ladies in the house. Uh, myomectomy cycle, taking a bow. Blank, the magician, my older 10-year-old, 16-year-old cousin is about to, ta-da, after about 6 p.m., we're at the AA meeting. Black men in degrees of repair in this cement building, neither church nor grave, eager, feeling lucky. A single button houndstooth shoot. An undeliberate bust accenting turtleneck are my ensemble, one of my first. You gonna buy me one of them real magician outfits, I ask, not knowing what to do if he said yes. You're too young to walk around like that, as if the answer should be obvious to a 13-year-old. Thank goodness it was too expensive. He could barely afford the collapsing cage trick. Two, the anesthesia feels like the invisible fire curtain of a black box theater, pans left to right downstage. Show's over. I'm a bad version of Acid Queen, Tina, hair everywhere, a short shrift exposing my legs so down I don't know I'm drugged. Scrunched at the bottom of the craftmatic-like industrial bed, this one is too big. Not Goldilocks, more like Rosalind Cash and Buckaroo Banzai without the wattage. Spent money on a private room? Spent, honey. Can't enjoy wallpaper with trim borders, nor Nicole Miller's signature hospital gown with cartoon stethoscopes and secret pockets. Crude Frankenstein stitches where the unbabies was. My own muscles morphed into Riddler's. Ha ha, strange. Pop, 18. Lucky charms, lemon, yellow, orange, orange, grapes, and stalks. The tricks bunny tells me there are secret characters. Black girls mostly, no? So, so warm, womanly in our extra estrogen. A private cubby if you turn the button. Ta-da! The curtain rises. Little did my cousin know. Look. This lady will be sawed in half. Breasts in the bra. She loves to think he's wild against the wall. Her hair all back in his hands, but this is the second time. He's weighed their shape in his palm, lower priorities and her successes. He likes structured lingerie, curving nipples. Everything's firm in the cup. Shango's wife, red is my love's hair, Maasai mud, his face painted white with chalk. The outline, a black line, a seam of skin so round round the nose, his cleft chin, Nina's lips. Vagina, the color of blackberry stains, then Brenda Sykes's luster. 
Matted hair he has coiled at the base, a borrowed Senegalese palm roll. Look how black gold reddens skin, iron ore coagulates, love brings that color. The hidden head, his uncircumcised self, mischievous peekaboo, my own peak in Mons. He was along the tree like dog do, in the trees, cobwebs up the tree a nest. The hollow sounds a skull, a seashell to the ear, see? The ungod winds a tangle. This poem is uh, based on the novel Beloved, uh, the moment before Sethe escapes to Ohio. Sethe on the rack. Do you remember the scene when she was held down? She saw distant water. She came from under, not water she wished. A brook by her home, it was babbling, she heard. A blindfold, two by two, arch her back. Against the pole, the flat, massed against water, heartbeat slowed, wave moving. Frozen, deep dreamed, womb dreams. I'm supposed to know this sound. It reminds me of mother on her back, tied by cloth, then some tighter thing. Thin, thinner, stronger string. Sixteen, sweet dead. How she got through puddles of salty air loins left. Her smelled meat, so she was left in peace. Two, the sun was evil. She married the deep. She could sleep silent, searing rays. Touched shoots with toes long ago. Blazing white, blinding her front and fro. Ashen arms pulled her outside, displaced from posture posed, scraped. That day brighter than teeth, eyes bone. Flashes everywhere, blue streaks, her pupils, lanky backed, curved still. She looked up, peers. Can somebody go in there and get my other book, um, Intermission? It should be in the closet. Uh, I just realized, oh, there's a poem that should follow this that I just disrupted by asking for the book. Is it in there? Yeah. It's uh, Intermission. I don't think you have my little chat book, do you? Okay. That's another, this is another mythology poem. Um, so I'm going to give you a brand, I'm going to share a brand new poem. I've only read it once. Mod Po. Philly people. Um, it was a poem that's commissioned to write in connection with Hurricane Sandy. So it's a little raw. It's called In My Baby Bikini. So what happened to Sarah, Hurricane Sandy was nothing happened to me, but my brother was flooded out, and he ended up staying with me uh, for a little less than a month, which was weird, because like, we haven't lived together since we were kids, so it's like, okay. <laughs> In my baby bikini. Sure, it was very weird for him, too. I flipped to a rubber beach cap on my head with plastic flowers, giant petals, eyes, irises, and photo. Coney, 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 between toes and cooler feet tops, wind pickups. Blanket stripes wan, sun fried chicken, fruit and soda warm, inside ice melts, thermos smelts. Sun wasn't hot, hot, but still, the day was a range new, tummy beach balled by fat and carbonation. I snuggle under someone, dozing shade, laid out lawn chair like I'm in part shadow, withdrawn from moisture's edge, poly blend land raft. That too much feeling, no basketball or football play on this day, averting any rubber skin, something unforgiving tightness. I'd heard more than seen Sandy. In rem, someone keying my door, haggard movements, dreaming. Two, unseen smaller than the pick, he hopping in and out of the water, a bobbing red-brown, skinny legs, golden laughing. Kid bro shares a birth date with family Ophelia, but a hee-hee who beach played till he played out. Vitiligo youngster foreshadowing his motling. Some never leave water, long purples, R.I.P. tide. A soul learns over lives. My baby mate drops in after staple sheet night owling. The water rose from under house crawl space, garlanding his wall borders as wood warped. Red hook ramshack framed dingy bobbleheads. Geek computer grab leaves to save self in circuits. Linking to my IP, he check checks for weeks here, clicking, clinging to his walls. Now I know I'm his home harbor for a grown sir version, big sis. <clears throat> my brother's six feet tall and like, <laughs> big sis is ironic. Yeah. <laughs> 
no worries. Forget it. Don't worry about it. In homage to Mr. Phil Reese's Mod Po, I'm going to sing a song. I'm going to sing a poem by a modernist poet, which I usually just do with my band. Make sure I've got the lyrics. That would help. I know it by heart, but I'm so worried about messing up somebody else's poem. <laughs> uh, I'll find it. This is um, Edgar Allan Poe, actually. A dream within a dream. Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting from you now, thus much let me avow. You are not wrong who dream that my days have been a dream, yet if hope has flown away in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I stand amid the roar of a surf-tormented shore, and I hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. How few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep. While I weep, while I weep. Oh God, can I not grasp them with a tighter clasp? Oh God, can I not save one from the pitiless way? Is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream? A dream within a dream. Dream. Thank you. Um, and the next song I'm going to sing is uh, a poem that I wrote uh, called Katrina Blues. Huh? Yeah, yes, it is. Thank you, Al. <laughs> happy, uh, happy playing, happy playing, uh, happy playing. Happy playing, uh, happy playing, happy playing music. Happy playing music. Happy playing mu happy playing mu hap 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 happy play hap hap happy playing music. Happy playing muse. Happy playing mu hap 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 happy playing music. Happy playing muse. Happy play hap hap happy playing music. Happy playing music. Music is happy no matter what. Music of the dying, hap, hap, happy music of the dying. Music of me crying while I'm lying in what's now a hut. Open up the storm drain. God, 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 God opens up the storm drain. Praying that the water doesn't fill me up. Shouting when I complain. Shout me down when I complain. A wave of silence I see whenever I look up. Indigo's the color. Indigo's the color. Black bodies, black black bodies, black black. Indigo's the color. Indigo's the color. Black bodies, one with one with one 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 with color. Color when the sharks smell blood. Blue ain't just a feeling. Blue 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 ain't just a blue blue. Blue, 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 ain't just a feeling. Blue sky water, they won when they, when they lift me up. Thank you. Thank you. you guys are nice, nice people. A uh, couple more sound poems. Time is flying. Al Phil Reese. Yeah, I know. It's good. Oh, okay. <sighs> oh. 
Jesus, 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 save your soul. Jesus, save your soul. Jesus, save your soul. What, what, what would you, Jesus, do? Jesus, do, Jesus, 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 Mahalia Theremin on my web page. I just trust them. I don't know what's on my web page with you guys. No? Mahalia Theremin. This is a piece that's, I think, an Afrofuturistic piece. It's a combination of the theremin guy. You know who the theremin sound is? There's the one who does sounds for science fiction movies. And Mahalia Jackson. So... I thought about this poem as a futurist poem because they were both looking towards another kind of a future. Him the speculative and her the concrete during the civil rights era. Mahalia Thurman. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho when the walls came tumbling down. Joshua, woo, woo, woo. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho when the walls came tumbling down. Joshua, woo, woo. Should we take time for questions or? <laughs> Hint. <laughs> I never take. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I never take requests except for Al Phil Reese's crew. I might. Can you request Africa? Can you do it? I, I, you know, that's the one one I don't actually want to do because they probably, it's like five million. It's like, oh, please, not that one, God. He made us. Re <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> is there something else that you might, like, you, didn't you say the missus gets her ass kicked? Yeah, the missus gets her ass kicked. Great. Do that one? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the anxiety around me trying to imitate Jeffrey Holder is always <laughs> stressful. So uh, this is the second pound, found, found, hmm, second found sound poem that uh, I wrote, and it's called The Missus Gets Her Ass Kicked. It's um, inspired by Doris Day. Y'all know who Doris Day is? Yeah. Look at you, young person. How do you know? I'm impressed. <laughs> Those movies. Those kittens. Heels. Crinoline skirts that Doris Day is wearing in her own kitchen. Why? I sure has got to look perfect. Why? This is gets her ass kicked.
Time for a couple of questions. Tracy, you ready for that? Nope. <laughs> so that was new. Yeah. yeah, you did it. You wound up coming around on that, didn't you? Yeah. Right, Jake? You heard it. I'm glad we recorded it because we haven't seen that before. Yeah, you might not again. Yeah. <laughs> so who's got a question for Tracy? Can I make a First, comment? Yes, please do that. Yep. So that never happened before, and as you all know, my sound poems are improvised, so I just wait. But but uh, I, I when we when we talk when you talked about that poem, I th I think I figured out articulating that the concept of what it means to dehumanize someone, the particular relationship of that in America, once you say. People who are human are not human. It's easy to make anybody less than human. And so whiteness did not save women from not being human. Once they saw, bear witness, accepted, were part of the conspiracy, were in the same place as people who were human weren't considered human. And so, of course, that same physicalized abuse just it spreads out. It's not controlled. So as you were doing the I'm in heaven, Dar stay, you heard it all started when we were brought here as slaves from Africa and the two poems came together. Yeah. I mean, it was about keeping women, white women, in line too. It, you know, the, 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 the construction of slavery in places, I'm going to say in the South, but they had slavery in the North too. You know, it's like, you want to be like them? Mike and I had a conversation about Irish-American migration. It's like, you want to be like them? Watch yourself. It all started. Right. It, it is big. Right. Yeah. It, the itting. The itting. And the we itting. talked about that in the course and talk in the class on genocide today, too. Yeah. It is big. Okay. Who has a question? We have time for one or two. Um, hi, my name is Marion. Hi, Marion. Uh, my question is pretty general. Um, I understand that your background is in spoken word and slam poetry. I was just wondering if you still have a relationship with that culture. Um, and then secondly, I'm curious as to your reasons for sort of exiting that world um, and then doing the, the current work that you do. Um, I, I have an affection for that world and the only way I'm connected to it is through my students who come into my class saying, I do hip hop and poetry. 
And I'm like, welcome to my world, except you weren't born when I was doing it. Uh, but they're very, they're very sweet. Um, what happened was I moved away from that world, A, because you want to be like the last person at the party who don't know when to leave. It's like, really? You still slamming at the New York Poets Cafe after you won a Grand Slam in 93? But the real, the real deal was that I got adopted. I got adopted by all these experimental poets like Charles and, and, uh, and they were just like, did you, tell me, you guys are too, remem too young to remember some of you, but uh, probably you, Marion, but do you remember um, that old, M that it's a video, used to come on MTV, I forgot the band, but there was this one girl who looked like a bumblebee and everybody would laugh at her and then she opened up a door and she went through and everybody was dressed as bumblebees and she was so happy. That's what happened with me. <laughs> I had people in the slams and stuff, they liked it, but it was getting kind of out there. And then I met these experimental poets. It was actually that Poetry and Empire conference yeah. at Penn, I think in 2000. 2003 in this room. And, and wow, the room seemed so big then. Yeah. And I was like, everybody has bumblebee things on. <laughs> and they said, come here, baby, just give you some sugar. <laughs> and I met all the, I, I, you know, so I was, and then I realized there's this whole, I mean, I don't want to shoe hip hop and all that stuff, uh, but I realized I was sort of, because of hip hop and because of other things that I was interested in, Poe, Shakespeare, I was moving towards a more sonic discourse, people like Sonia Sanchez, obviously. And then, and then I went up and across the street and there was this whole, and I, and I have to say it wasn't, like I said, they were like, you know, embraced. I wasn't just, I just didn't find myself, but they were like, yeah, you're part of, you're part of this too. And that's, um, once I realized that, that these were my peeps, it was over. It's been love ever since then. But it's not against anything else. It's more like I found you know what I mean? Like I found that community. I'm so grateful. Great. Thank you for Thank the question. Thank you for asking. Let's take one more, and then we'll have a reception. I know. Oh, here. Danny Snelson. Nice hat, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> nice reading. Thank you so much. This was well, fantastic. Yes. I have thousands of questions, but I'll, I'll stick with one. <laughs> uh, uh, regarding your improvisational process, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is maybe a difficult thing to talk about, the sort of technical aspects of how you improvise as you're doing it. When I'm listening, I hear all kinds of different technologies happening. Like I hear a record player sometimes that's skipping, sometimes it's like a CD that's caught in a groove, or you know, with Doris Day, it felt almost like a film recording, right? There you get this, the spinning of the, uh, you know, the reels. That's so I, I wonder, and I know that these are tied up in questions of archive and history and witnessing for you, but I wonder if you might comment on how does different media interact, or, or how do you choose one when improvising? Do you, do, are you channeling one of these things as a kind of instrument while you do it, or? or I don't choose, yeah, I just don't choose. It's, it's, it's very much where I get from the audience. I have a, I have a sort of narration of what I, the poem is about, in quotes, but how, I have no idea. So like this is the first time that, that I really interacted with th the concept of technology in some of these poems, and you're exactly right. The, the, the way that the film track, the sound um, part is different from the film part. It was developed and so, so separating them. But today was the first time where I really started to experiment with the notion of vinyl. And not just scratching vinyl, but thinking of different types of vinyl, like going from 30, 30, 33 to 78 to like those it was really, what's, the, what's faster than 78? I mean, um, than 33, like 20 something? 45. 45, thank you. 45, so you know, like the sort of speeding up and slowing down that speaks to like a sort of a time, a time warping that's encapsulated in this warm medium of vinyl. So it's the first time that that occurred to me to feel and to interact with. It's a very specific technological things. I'm glad that you caught it. I'm glad I caught it. I was like, oh, yeah. is that what's coming? Okay. That's fantastic. So we should take full advantage of Tracy's being here and his fabulous reception. Copies of the book are on sale right behind us. Oh, and there's a CD in the book, by the way. And there's, there's some a of my CD in the poems. book with an image of, Tr not with an image of Tracy, I guess the back of the book has it. Um, so we hope you do that. And if you do that, you can have, I'm sure Tracy would be happy inscribing it for you. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to thank the Morses again. Thank, thank you, you so much. They're Naomi, thank you. Thanks, Naomi. It's an honor to do this. We realize you guys traveled. Most of you travel from Florida, so it's great to see you. 
Really? For, for Tracy, everybody. Well, Bill Thank Spear you. came from Arkansas. You know, we're wow. we're big fans. Um, Thank so we you. We hope you'll Thank hang, you. hang out and, and, and talk to Tracy about her work and, and, and remind her that the University of Pennsylvania is a home away from home for her, and we hope she'll come lots and lots and lots. So please help the University of Pennsylvania community and the Writer's House Thank and welcome back Tracy Morris to the Writer's House. Thank you, sir. Tracy Morris. Thank you, Al. And now it's time to eat and drink. You are fabulous. Fabulous. Oh, what's going on?